Hi, I'm Jack Arlo. And I'm Felicia. And this is our review of Scurry Dogs. Scurvy, scurvy dogs, <laughs> not scurry <laughs> dogs. <laughs> In Scurvy Dogs, players are trying to be the richest pirate by the end of the game. In the box you'll get a playing board which is the ocean you'll be fighting on, 8 captain cards which are the pirates in the game, 8 captain tokens and their bases, 20 island tokens to create islands in the ocean, 4 named island tokens, 40 crew cards each with their own abilities and effects, 28 letters of marquee which cost 5 gold to buy, 1 kraken card and 1 la fortaleza card, 16 ship cards which have stats, effects, and booty on them. 6 unique ships with stats, price, selling, worth, and limits. 32 cargo cards which are items you can carry on your ships and also have stats. A Spanish Armada card. 8 flag tokens. 57 booty challenge cards. 120 Dublins and some dice. The pirate with the most Dublins at the end of the game wins. Here's how to set up. Place the board in the middle of the table. Place La Fortaleza card and the Kraken card at both corners of the board. Separate the decks into piles of cargo, crew, booty challenge, and ships. Each player takes a captain card and places his token on one of the dock spaces. Each player also gets a sloop card, a cannon card, one random crew card, one random cargo card, and 20 doubloons. Now flip over three cards from the crew, cargo, and ship decks. These cards are what is available to purchase at the docks. Randomly, players will take island tokens and place them on the board following certain rules. Place 250 doubloons on the logo, this is the bank of Port Royal, and you're now ready to plunder. Every turn is broken down into three phases. The first phase is to adjust your cannon and place secret booty challenges. You must choose if you want your cannon in cargo or ready to fire. This affects the limit of your ship. Then you draw a challenge card. If it's secret, you do not show it to anyone. If not, reveal it. You can try and complete it by rolling the dice and seeing if you're successful. If you roll equal to or above the target number, then you're successful. If you are, you can take the booty of the challenge. Now you go to phase two, the move. Here you can move your ship onto the water according to its speed. The final phase is the action phase. Here you can do one action depending on what square your ship is on. If you're at the docks, you can buy and sell ships, crew members, cargo, and get ready for your next outing. If you're on a ruin, take land challenge of 8. If you win, you draw a free crew card. If you're on a shipwreck, make a sea challenge of 8. If you win, you draw the top cargo card. If you're in a shallow water with another player, you do battle. You can also do this in deeper water or do a booty challenge. If you're at an unnamed island, you can attack a captain or do a booty challenge. On named islands, you can only do attacks on other captains but no booty challenge there. If you're on the Kraken card, you can attack it by winning a sea challenge of 17. If you win, take the head into cargo and bring it to the back dock to end the game. Same goes with La Fortaleza, but this is a land challenge of 17. Once you do one of those actions depending on the square you are on, the next player takes his turn and so on. When you fight another captain, you roll 2d6 and add the sea or land value of their captain and any other card they use in the attack. If both rolls the same number, they both discard all lime and rum cards and have a party instead of fighting. Woo! The captain who does roll higher than the other collects all his gold and one secret booty card. If he has the Kraken head or fortress loot, you can steal one of those cards too. There is also the Spanish Armada which patrols the sea. If the captain reaches plus 5, plus 6, or 7, that player must roll a d6 at the start of his turn to see if he fights the armada. On a 1 or 2, he loses an action and must fight the armada at land 13 or c13. If he loses, he discards a crew or cargo. The game can end in three ways. The port runs out of money, the head or loot is brought back to the docks, or the treasure map booty challenge is completed with 4 cards. The player with the most doubloons wins. Scurvy Dogs has that talisman feeling where you try to increase your stats until you're good enough to go for the treasure or crack it. You also have to defend yourself from the other players as well. Most of the game you're just moving around the sea drawing cards. It's a fast paced game and player turns are not long which is nice. The art is alright and the board is nice and big. You will however need a lot of space for this game if playing 4 or more players. Hiding your cannons and cargo to avoid the armada, forcing them to attack the other captains is always fun. We did find that the game is too random and luck based. If you get attacked by other captains, you can lose all your gold based on your roll. Actually, a lot depends on your die roll. The setup can be very long and the rulebook needs major work. 
Some of the cards have lots of leftover space on them and they could have used the space to better explain the cards. Other cards have the text and flavor text mixed up and can be confusing to new players. If you're into fast-paced, luck-based, pirate games which are easy enough to teach, you might want to try this one. It's just too luck-based for our review team. We're giving Scurvy Dogs 6.5 Dublins out of 10.